Hello everyone. Today's question is combination sum 3. So the question says that we have to find all possible combination of k numbers which add up to a number n. And we are only given numbers from 1 to 9 and they can only be used once. So if you see an example number 1, our input is that a k is 3 and n is 7. So we have to use 3 numbers to form a sum 7. And the output is 1, 2, 4. In example number 2, we have k is equal to 3 and n is equal to 9. So the sum should be 9 and we can use 3 numbers. And the output is that we have 3 arrays 1, 2, 6, 1, 3, 5 and 2, 3, 4. And all of these numbers add up to 9. So let's see the explanation and then we will see the code. So as the question suggests, we need to form combinations and we are given numbers from 1 till 9. So let's take the first example where the k was 3 and n was 7. So we need to find 3 numbers whose combination sum is equal to 7. Let's start from the beginning. So looking at the numbers, we can start from the beginning. We have this empty array at the beginning and we can start adding numbers. So the first number is 1 and we can add 1. Now after adding 1, we need to check two things. The first one is what is the sum and the second is how many numbers are remaining. So the sum is currently 1 and we need 7 minus 1 is equal to 6 more and the remaining numbers are 2 to 9. So next we come to 2 and we add 2 in our list. Now the sum becomes 7 minus 3 which is equal to 4 and the remaining numbers are 3 till 9. And we have space for only one more number. As since we need 4, we can first try adding 3. And in this case, the sum will be equal to 6. And we don't have any more space remaining. And this is not correct. So in this case, we go back and we remove this number. And we move to the next number, which is 4. And we try adding 4. And in this case, the sum is 7, which is the correct answer. And we have formed a list of 3 numbers. That means our k is equal to 3 which has a sum 7 and our n is also satisfied. So this is the answer. Now let's take another example. Let's take the second example in which the k was 3 and n was 9. Again we start with an empty array and the first number that we put is 1. Now the sum remaining is 9 minus 1 which is equal to 8 and the number which are remaining are 2 to 9. So we remove 1 and we move to 2. We add 2 and now our sum becomes 9 minus 3 which is equal to 6 and the numbers remain from 3 to 9. So we have used this 2 and we move to 3. So we add 3 and the sum which remains is 9 minus 6 which is equal to 3. And since we have used up all the space in our array, this is not the correct answer. So what we do is, we go back, we remove this 3 and we move to the next number which is 4. So we add 4 and now our sum is 7. Again, this is not the correct answer. So we remove 4, we go back and we add 5. And now our sum is 8. Again, this is not the correct answer. So we remove 5 and we add 6. And the sum is equal to 9. So this is the correct answer. So one of the possibility in this case will be 1, 2 and 6. Now let's search for other possibilities. So we start with an empty array. The first number that we add is 1. And this time, we don't add 2. Instead, we add 3. So we add 3 and now the sum is 4. And after 3, we add 4 and the sum becomes 8. Again, this is not the correct answer. So we go back and we remove 4. And we add 5. And the sum becomes 9. So another possibility that we came up with, 1, 3, 5. Now let's search for another possibility. Again. We start with an empty array. This time, we do not start with 1. We start with 2. So we start with 2 and the next number that we add is 3 and the sum currently is equal to 5. And the next number that we add is 4 and the sum is equal to 9. So we have found another possibility which is 2, 3, 4. So according to the output in example number 2, these are all the 3 possibilities that we will find. So using this simple logic, you can try and search for different combinations 
and you will find different answers. But the algorithm that we are using for this question is known as DFS, which is depth first search. So I have already made a video on depth first search. The link is in the description below. You should definitely go and watch that video. But in a nutshell, this is what DFS is. Let's say we are given these numbers and you need to traverse over every number. So let's say the first number that we pick is 1 and from 1 we have the option of either going to 2 or 4. So let's go to 2 and we also maintain an array. So the first number that we went to was 1, the next number was 2 and from 2 we have the option of going to 3 or 5. So let's say we go to 5. I also add 5 in my list. So from 5 you only have the option of going to 4. So we go to 4. We come to 4 and I add 4 in my list. Now from this 4, I have the option of going to 1 and 1 has already been traversed. So this means that one of our possible path has already been traversed, which is 1, 2, 5, 4. Now let's look at another path. Again, we come to 1, we come to 2, but this time instead of going to 5, we will come to 3. So we come to 3 and from 3, we can only go to 2, which has already been traversed. So this is where our list ends. And this is another possible path that we can have. Now we can keep using this DFS approach and keep looking for different paths. And this is the same logic that we will be using for our combinations. So we will come up with a list and we will check for certain conditions. And if it satisfies all our conditions, then we have to return it. So that was the explanation. Now we will see the code. In the meanwhile, please give this video a thumbs up. This really motivates us to make more videos and helps us to grow. Now let's see the code. So in the beginning, I am creating a function DFS in which I will pass the digit, the starting number, the current list which is formed and the current sum which is formed. So let's say for example, our k is equal to 3 and our n is equal to 7. Now in the beginning, our digit and start number are both 0 and our list is empty and our current sum is also 0. Next, in this DFS function, I am checking for some certain conditions. So for the first condition is that if my current sum is equal to n and my digit is equal to k, then I am going to append that into my answer. Next, I am checking the condition that if my digit is greater than or equal to k or my current sum is greater than n, that means that, means that this is not the answer we want and we simply return out of this loop. Next, I have the condition in which I am using a for loop. For i in range starting from the start number plus 1 till range 10. So since my start number was equal to 0, start plus 1 is equal to 1. So my i in the beginning is equal to 1. And I append that 1 into my cur list. My current list now looks something like this. Next I am calling the DFS function or my digit plus 1 my i index, my current list and the current sum plus i. So that means is my digit at the beginning was 0. So 0 plus 1 is 1. Next my i was equal to 1 and my current list has only 1 in the list. Next my current sum in the beginning was 0. So 0 plus i is equal to 1. So my DFS function will be called on these parameters. So when we use the DFS function or these parameters, all of this condition will be checked. So first I will check the condition that if my current sum is equal to n. So my current sum is currently 1 and this condition is not satisfied. So we come to the next condition and we check if my current sum is greater than n or my digit is greater than or equal to k. So again my current sum is not greater than n and this condition is not satisfied. So we come to the next condition in which again I will use the for loop. So this time my start number is 1 and 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So my i is 2 and we append this i into our current list. So I appended this into my current list and now my DFS will be called on these parameters. So my digit was now 1 so it will become 2. My i has also become 2. My current list now has 1 and 2 and my current sum has now become 3. So when I call the DFS function on these parameters, again we will check for the same conditions. Again I will check if my current sum is equal to n and it is not n. So we come to the next condition and we check if my current sum is greater than n. It is not greater than n. 
so I come for the next condition and again I will use the for loop so this time my start number is 2 so my i becomes 3 and we append this string to our current list again my dfs will be called on digit plus 1 which is 3 my i which was 3 and I have appended 3 into my current list which now becomes 1, 2 and 3 and my current sum plus 1 which now becomes 6 so I will call the dfs function on these numbers and my conditions will be checked so I will check if my current sum is equal to n so my current sum was now 6 which is not equal to 7 so we will go to the next condition in which I will check if my current sum is greater than n it is not greater than n so I again I come to the next condition so none of these conditions are satisfied this means that we need to backtrack and to backtrack we will pop the last number from our current list so our last number was 3 and we will remove the 3 now again I will use the for loop and this time my i is now 4 and I will append this 4 into my current list now my digit becomes 4, my i is also 4 and my current list now has a 4 and my sum is also 7. Again I will call the dfs function on these parameters and the conditions will be checked. So the first condition is if my current sum is equal to n, so my current sum is equal to 7 and the second is if my digits are equal to k. So both of these conditions are satisfied and I append this current list into my answer. So if you look down below on line number 24, I have initialized an empty list which is answer. So my current list will now be appended into this answer which will now look something like this. On line number 25, I am simply calling my dfs function inside the combination sum 3 function and at the end I am returning the answer. So that was the code, I will now submit it. And my code got accepted. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. Please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.